The 16th world champion, the Norwegian Magnus Carlsen, was born on the 30th of November of 1990. He learned chess from his father when he was five years old and early it was already clear that he had a very good memory, a fine feeling for the pieces and he was already very strong in strategical end games when he was a bit older of course, uh, 10, 12, 11, 12. Um, and this is not so typical for young players. It was already a, a sign for his extraordinary talent and even to this day he has a good feeling for the harmony and coordination for his pieces. He fights to the end even in almost equal positions where um, yeah, his advantage is microscopic and not visible to a normal human eye. He finds resources, stops all the opponent's active options and then slowly but surely grins them out. So, but he's also very strong tactically, of course. He has uh, trained with Simon Atgestein and also later with um, Gary Kasparov. And in 2013 he then became world champion by beating the Indian player Viswanathan Anand. In May 2014 he set the new ELO record to 2882 and this still stands there today. A really magnificent achievement by Magnus Carlsen. I even want to call this, or suggest to call this endgame type with one rook and, and same color bishop, so here two rooks, Carlsen endgame. Because Magnus Carlsen has played so many instructive games with them, his style in a way um, uh, looks a bit similar to that of José Raúl Cabablanca and Anatoly Karpov, who also had a very fine-tuned feeling for the initiative in such strategical endgames. Carlsen Carana saw Paolo Bibal 2012 wide to move. Wide is better because the bishop is much more active. Protected by this pawn c3, very important, giving this weakness good cover without being passive and attacking both wings so that the principle of two weaknesses may be applied later. But Black's bishop, on the other hand, is more or less purely passive, no active targets, must defend the b6 weakness more or less forever, often a bad sign already. And furthermore, the light squares are very weak, also a bad sign. Yeah, usually for such cards and endgames, the factors are good bishop, bad bishop, activity of the king, the rooks, white's king is more active here, um, pawn structure issues, black, black's weaknesses um, are serious, but with white's weaknesses, uh, there could be the saying that a weakness that can be exploited cannot be exploited is no weakness. But okay, white has some weaknesses on the queen side, so probably theoretically this is still a draw, but over the board, extremely un pleasant. Yeah, but how uh, to play White's initiative, uh, how to start White's initiative from here on? And yeah, I like Carlsen's move Rook E4 very much. This just activates one Rook further and uh, if exchanged then White's King comes closer to exploiting the weak light squares on Black's queen side. And let's check the engines at the moment also consider this uh, very highly. Taking on b6 or not? No, this would be a tactical mistake. This the engines of course c and now black is for choice. Yeah, it's often the case in such scenarios with one weakness and potentially another weakness that it's not a good strategy to win the weakness directly if, Bla if the defender gets counterplay or here if the defender here it even doesn't work for us. A better strategy is to force the, the, the opponent to passive defense. And then, after all pieces are active, then open a second front or exploit a second weakness. This is often a better strategy and in a way it is, is also realized by Magnus Carlsen exact, exactly in this game and textbook fashion.
Yeah, so of course the engine suggests C4 to blow open later with C5. But one disadvantage here, of course, is that Black's move are completely natural and easy and can be made uh, quickly, while Magnus' approach poses much bigger problems. And this is also one of his big strengths. He has a, has a good practical strength. After Rook E4, it is very, very difficult for Black to make a move at all. Well, this is another big practical advantage from the human viewpoint. Yeah, I cannot. Say, I also have no good solution here, so I guess Rook E4 is uh, therefore a, was chosen as a better way to play. Yeah, one, one thing. What about F5 to force the exchange? Nevertheless, now this is too radical. Okay, it forces the exchange, but White has now a double attack. And okay, and the F5 pawn would be taken, of course, as then the B pawn remains weak, and otherwise F5 is very weakening. So this is a mistake. While rook e8 could be played, but it's already a bit artificial to leave the open file, of course. Then bishop e2, and now something, but it's still not easy, but certainly not. Rook d6, then white's rook could be activated in this original way, and now black has a traffic jam on the queen side. Fabiano Carana chose g6 to take this pawn out of the attack now uh, the, of the bishop now comes another typical stratagem g4 Magnus Carlsen wants to mark the f and h pawn as weaknesses behind and the attacker often plays g4 in such positions for exactly this purpose and now it's something like the principle of three weaknesses what it's more or less about now again the bishop e3 Rook c4 plan might be interesting, but Magnus' move is more principled. Here, I guess it's a matter of taste. Magnus stops all counterplay. King d5 would also be interesting. Okay, yeah, if Karana has regrouped uh, by exchanging one rook and bringing the other rook there, but White's king is now closer to the weaknesses on the queen side. How to continue? Yeah, the typical undermining lever for these structures next would be h5, and then it would be good to be able to take back with the rook, so rook b5, and h5. All textbook style. Yeah, black cannot do much, so Karana uh, uh, Move, just moves his rook. Uh, here comes another interesting moment. I think again Magnus' choices from a practical point of view to be preferable by objectively, I cannot say, taking a, continuing the undermining strategy so that black also got uh, the weaknesses is one possibility. But Magnus' move is better at least from a practical point of view, because now in the 40th move, black has a very, very difficult defensive decision. What is the last chance to fight here to keep the defensive setup uh, in, in some shape? King e7 is the only move. And the idea is to meet f5 by rook d6, and then the rook can stay on the 6th rank, and there it is not so passive, and then I cannot say. The computer uh, cannot break it, but I, of course, yeah, yeah didn't check it uh, yeah, to, the, to the very end. But king e7 is at least so tenacious that the computers cannot break it by themselves also at the moment, and the let's check not. So this may still hold, but of course over the board, it is for a human next to impossible to defend this. White can press on safely forever. Um, taking on h5, on the other hand, would be a big mistake. Now f5 forces Black's rook to leave the sixth rank, and then White's king will invade sooner rather than later. And white is winning because white is so much quicker in the resulting races due to the space advantage. Here, of course, one of white's strategic aims is realized the king invades on the weak light squares. And bishop c5 is also a mistake because now, um, yeah, somehow white is too aggressive. 
here. But how to continue? This is also very important and very typical to exploit the principle of two weaknesses. The attacker's forces can be regrouped more quickly than the defenders. This is a typical point why it's good first to tie all defenders down to passive defense on one weakness and then switch to the other ones or open a second front. Yeah. Um, one, one nice line would be here. And Magnus is also very strong in techniques and he have, has to be it because he has to prevent all counterplay, of course, and sometimes technical, uh, tactical means are needed. King d5 and the king comes and after rook c4 check, the rook would be beautifully dominated by Magnus Carlsen's king. Really nice. So the weaknesses, White's weaknesses somehow cannot really be exploited. White is too active always. Yeah, it's very unpleasant for black in any case, and I think most likely it's lost. So king e8, and now. Only now, when it's absolutely clear, taking to keep all flexible options open to the moment when the decision makes sense. And now h6 has a problem. And white wins. Okay, taking directly would be bad due to the check, but the king, of course, improves first. Yeah, and now white attacks on the king side and on the queen side, and this should win. And the final uh, tactical operation of the game, simplifying to a von Bishop endgame from this Carlson endgame, was f6. And whatever happens, white wins, because here black cannot uh, avoid the exchange of rooks, or the, or the even, or opponent game would be won as well, of course, and white will win the two pawns first and the game later. And this results in a configuration which was or already there in the game, famous game, Fischer Keres, which was Bobby Fischer's first win against the Soviet uh, Grandmaster. And it is also in my 60 memorable games, and Magnus, of course, knew everything by heart from uh, now on. And this is, of course, a position where he is extremely strong. He just keeps everything under control, moves as far forward as safely possible and then regroups until uh, the end. First the pawns come forward to tie black completely down to passive defense and next the king comes to d7 and then the c pawn will decide the issue in white's favor. Yeah. A very yeah and finally of course the bishop comes and Fabiano Carana resigns as a, resigned after bishop e7 as a c pawn will queen. A textbook example for an uh, endgame with rooks and same colored bishops and also for the principle of two weaknesses. Carlsen used his strategical initiative very skillfully by posing more and more problems for Fabiano Carana until in the 40th move the pressure became almost unbearable and over the board it is already next to impossible to defend um, this while after king e7 it is not completely clear black may be able to hold but white of course still can try many things forever and, 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 and Carlsen no doubt would have done just that um, and uh, this is his, one of his major strengths, of course, to be able to play such strategical endgames very precisely, very powerfully, and to fight for that, for that to fight until um, that.